Hello, happy Saturday. How are you all doing today? Happy weekend. Happy start to the weekend. Three day weekend if, you know, Monday is a holiday for you. But I want to talk a little bit about this past week. I've been doing some intense programming stuff. And you, you know me, you know, I do so many, a variety of different things. I focus on a variety of different things and programming, love programming stuff. That's one of the things that I can literally focus on and I'm doing and I'm like, you have to kind of get into the mindset of it. Like, like, you know what you want to do and you kind of drill down deep into it. It's like, you have to finish it because if you, if you, if you take, take a break from it, you, you may forget exactly where you were on it. So that's something that I can spend hours upon hours doing late into the night and not realize I've been, I did that when I was younger, when I was making a website, I was doing all this crazy uh, web programming stuff and it would literally be like 3 a.m. I'm like still working on something like, mm. Mm. okay. So yeah, that's a lot of fun. But this past week, what I want, what I needed to do, this is a different, type of, different type of programming. I was doing computer programming to, I was making a bash script on, I have a Mac computer, so it, it's, it's, it's a Mac. I, I think, I think it's, you can use it on like any platform. I think it's more, L- Linux and, and Mac are probably more closely related when it comes to that sort of programming than Win- uh, Windows is. Because Mac is kind of based on, I think it's uh, Unix, which I think is like the a core of, of Linux. I believe, you know, I don't want to quote, quote me on that, but that's from, from what I am kind of aware there. So basically I've, I've done these other types of programming before. And basically what it does is it allows me to run a certain script and it allows me to do certain things that I don't have to do it all manually. And here's a classic example of something that I created before. Okay. So I have a folder full of a bunch of images. All these images, and, and this is what I use for like my website, automaster.com. You know, you know, the stock images that I use in my videos. Well, these images, a lot of them are like huge size. We're talking like 6,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels and all that sort of stuff. I'm not gonna upload those massive files to my website. All of these files have to be downscaled to 2,000 pixels at max. Let's just say I have a folder full of 10 images. I could do that one by one, you know, import it into Photoshop, you know, do some resizing or run run some at, at, um, auto, automation task and save it. You know, it's just so much work. It's so much work because there's so many. If I'm just doing one, it's not a problem. But if you're doing consistently many, many, many items, you're going to realize you have to have some sort of program that's going to that that you customize that you spend time working on that's going to do it for you all you have to do is just run the command okay so that's what i've done with with the bash scripts in 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 the past that i have set up you know i'll have a folder full of images i'll run i'll run the command it'll take all the images resize them make it you know smaller and there we we go we have smaller size images now done that for like um, combining video and audio before with other things that I work on but this this current one that I worked on is much more complex basically what it does it has some it has it takes various online internet resources and it has to download those resources and name them accordingly name them in a list so now that you have the list you also have a JSON file that has the inf- the uh, metadata for those downloaded resources. So then from there, the script has to read the JSON file and extract certain bits of information from it. And then it has to put it into various arrays and strings and it has to filter through various things and it has to format it in a certain way. And then it can, that, that can be uploaded to a separate directory you know that can that can be uploaded in a different way to another resource another website on online and, you know and it started pretty basic i you know i had to manually put in certain things here and there and, and then i found out oh 
that's let's make it more let's spend some more time figuring out how to do this here that's because initially I didn't even have a J, JSON file with all the information I had to manually put in all the information myself like okay this is this this is that this is that now there's a JSON file that gets down downloaded it gets all the information from it and then it'll read it from from there but then there was another obstacle it's like okay what about this other you know piece here this um, let's just say an image okay or you know a document or you know whatever it is let's just say that I would have to manually add this this image or this document to to the project because it can't automatically get that resource that's available online on this other website and bring it down to me and then upload it to the other website so I had to manually do that and then I realized oh wait I can automate the process of downloading it Okay, so so now I have all of these documents here, but what how can I how can I automatically get that uploaded and sent along with you know the uh, main project that I have here to this other website? And there you go, I figured that out too. So uh, it's just it's just amazing, it really is. So you run this complex script of commands that essentially all I have to do is just put in an ID number, okay? One, two, three, four, you know, whatever the ID number is. It gets those resources. It extracts those the, those resources to my computer. It filters through them and analyzes them and gets the data out that's necessary from it. And then it re-uploads it to a different ser uh, server or re resource here or just something with it in in some way. So it's like yes, yes, and you just feel like yes because then all that automation process is pretty much done for you, and because. The thing is, if you're just doing this a handful of times, you don't really need to create an automated task. But when you're doing hundreds and hundreds of things, you're bound to make mistakes. It's going to take more time in the long run. Like let's just say that there there's a hundred tasks, okay? In the time it took me to actually create the program, I could have done maybe fifteen or twenty tasks, okay? That's a decent amount. But that other eighty tasks will take longer than having the script automatically do these things for me that you know is much more it's much easier so when you're doing a lot of things and a lot of tasks having an automation program makes it so much more convenient so much easier than doing it all manually but it depends on your on your usage case it really does so yeah, that's just what I've been up to this this past week. A lot of fun, a lot of exciting things. Uh, it's just you just feel like a sense of accomplishment when you do this. This like you're like, yes, I finally did it. I finally did this here. It's amazing. You just look look at the code afterwards. And you're like, I have no idea what this code is. I have no idea how I did this, but I did it. There it is. I I did it. But it also requires a lot of like internet research as well because. When you're working with certain APIs for a systems, like you know, it's not just something that I created in, in all by myself. You know, you have to work with certain APIs in order to actually do. Like even with the images, like I, mean, I mentioned, like converting all the images, that's not really working with an API, but you're working with the code of a program, an image program, image magic. That's what it's called. It's called image magic. Um, you have to know what the commands are that will resize the image, or will save the image, what quality to save the image as, what do you do if there's other formats of images, not just like a JPEG image, what if there's a, a PNG, you know, what do you do then? How do you resize these things? How do you do these, these things here? You have to know the command. So yeah, it takes a lot of internet research as well to understand, and then once you know it, you know, I have all the code saved there, so I do is just copy it, paste it in the uh, terminal, and there it goes, it fires off. So, yep, that is what, that is what we do here, okay? So, ah, so uh, nice, so, so nice. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that automation is awesome. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's video. You all take care. Have have a wonderful day, and um, I'll catch you later. I'm going to go have some of my Uber Eats food shortly.
for a lunch. I didn't realize this, that a big old like vegetable rice dish with the both the spring rolls, it also came with like three or four dumplings as well. It's like, oh my gosh, there's so much food. I literally have like so much food left. It's insane. It's like, it's like three, it's, it's going to be like possibly even four servings. I don't know, it, it may not be four, but it's definitely going to, going to be three servings. My gosh, that's crazy. Anyway, y'all take care. Have a great one. I'll catch you later. Let me know what sort of programming you do if you enjoy that. This is, I do web programming. I do a little bit of this bash com computer programming. Um, I don't know anything about, you know, creating apps. This is just all command line type of stuff, so. Anyway, you all take care. Have a great one. Catch you later. Bye.